Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about the Imperium as we get into the Assassins. Now, these are not the Assassins from the Officio Assassinorum. While they do play a part in this lore, they don't necessarily mean that they come from the Officio Assassinorum. These are just Assassins found within the Imperium in general. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k content every single day. If you have any suggestions, just comment down below. And if you like our videos, don't forget to share them with your friends. But with that said, let's get into 40 facts on the assassins of the Imperium. Even in a universe saturated with blood and death, there are those which turn murder into a sublime art form. The assassin is such a being, spending his life, perfecting his skills in killing, rising to greater heights with each life they take. While many who serve the Emperor are proficient in battle, assassins rebel only in the act of killing, and often care little for commonplace combat. Driven with either an unhealthy thirst for the blood of others, or a cold attachment leaving them devoid of their humanity, they can come in a variety of forms, linked together only by their desire to deliver death in the most efficient or grandiose way. They are inevitably drawn to those organizations which revere killing as much as they do, or are in need of such artful killers. Many join death cults, societies devoted to the act of murder. Others might be recruited to mysterious imperial organizations devoted to the art of the sanctioned killing. In all cases, it is the desire to take life and develop the skills of doing so which defines the assassin, a journey which will end only when they themselves succumb to death. Assassins are often not just masters at killing, but also at closing in on their prey and striking without warning. Like the Imperium's most deadly predators, an assassin stalk their quarry before he attacks, choosing the precise moment to inflict the maximum amount of damage and the best chance to make the kill. These techniques are the result of his skills in stealth and infiltration, slipping past sentries or guards and finding ways into seemingly impregnable fortresses. Like murderous ghosts, they appear out of nowhere to silently take down their target before vanishing once again. A truly masterful assassin can kill without detection, leaving only terror, confusion, and a corpse in his wake. In this capacity, an assassin makes an excellent scout or skirmisher, gathering information and spreading discord among his enemies, while his fellow acolytes conduct their mission. Part of an assassin's abilities extend to the art of deception and disguise. When he cannot move about unseen or comes across a barrier which he cannot breach, he can sometimes hide in plain sight. The finest are often adept chameleons, changing their appearance to match surroundings and mimicking their enemies to hide amongst them. Here they become talented liars and learn to match the speech and mannerisms of their foe, to slide into their ranks unnoticed. Such methods are excellent ways of getting closer to a target, passing freely through security checkpoints and other barriers before attacking an unsuspecting quarry, and using the confusion to fade into the background undetected. Assassins are also skilled at the application of precision violence, taking out specific foes or striking targets that might have otherwise considered themselves safe. Either close up with blades and poison, or from afar with a sniper rifle or a remote explosive, the assassin can hit a foe swiftly and suddenly, whereas a less subtle acolyte can be forced to expend huge amounts of ammunition or saturate an area with explosives to eliminate a target. The assassin needs but one shot or one thrust of the blade to do his work. This talent for precision murder can be useful when collateral damage must be kept to a minimum, or only a key figure needs removal to crush an uprising or a cult. In addition to skills in moving about unseen, bypassing security, and reaching difficult targets, the assassin also makes a good solid support combatant. Alongside the more heavily armed and armored acolytes, he can offer long-range assistance, covering the battlefield with sniper fire, or skulking around the flanks of his foes to take out stragglers and wounded enemies. Using his skills in death, an assassin can do terrible damage in the right circumstances, and open the way to his fellow acolytes to complete their goal. This could be taking out combatants unseen from kilometers away, the only evidence of his presence, the exploding heads of his targets. It could be close and bloody with blades and pistols, appearing suddenly to tear open throats and expose joints before rejoining the shadows. Assassins typically view most problems as solvable through precision and exact application of deadly force, and as such, 
move their bodies and mind to best execute it. Most delight in such applications, and eagerly seek them out, or view them as acts of devotion, as part of their veneration to the Emperor. The worlds of the Imperium are home to numerous death cults, murder guilds, life-taker orders, and other places to train in these arts of murder. Surrounded by such death and destruction, and living in the shadows of constant danger, some sects revere death as a force of nature, a vengeful god, a fickle ally. An assassin can hail from any one of these divergent sources, or even have learned his skills alone after long years, selling his talents as a mercenary. Assassins born into a hive, or as part of a factory of a forge world, often favor guns and technological ways of killing. The death cults on these worlds often advocate training in advance and exotic weaponry, such as elaborate micro-explosives. In contrast, the assassins of a feral world rely on more primitive means. Even if they later trade their metal sword for a power blade, there is a talent for getting in close to cut their foe's throat. Living in such conditions also grants a greater understanding of the natural environment, and these assassins may also be adept at the use of native poisons on other homeworlds. Highborn assassins represent another facade of death, using not only the resources to those born on developed worlds, but also exploiting the subtle ways of social conflict and mastering the skills of moving unseen by means of disguise and deception. They can also often call upon greater resources than their more humble brethren. The noble houses of the Imperium sometimes foster such men and women so that they might retain the service of a trusted killer, tied to the family through bonds of blood. Many death cults venerate Imperial Saints, and the assassins from Shrine Worlds can view their murderous art as an essential part of a religious life, reinforcing their faith to the Emperor with each kill they take. Assassins across the Imperium are bound in their common devotion to death and murder. Their varying origins are all but little matter to the dead they leave behind. And those were 40 facts on the assassins of the Imperium. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a nice little um, look into um, what it means to be an assassin within the Imperium. You be part of a death cult. You can be part of like different um, enclaves that deal in death. You don't necessarily have to be the elite officio assassinorum uh, assassins because uh, each one of those um is it clades um or is it ordos i think it's clades uh, but as you know you don't have to be part of those um clades assassin cl clads or clades um in order to become an assassin you could just be from a regular hive world or a feral world and uh grow up killing people because huh? that's what you do that's what the imperium does you Check out our 40 facts on the High Lords. No, sorry, on the High Borns. Uh, there, you'll learn that all all, all sections of uh, the Imperium um, are full of of just um, people trying to get you, basically. Uh, so even though you might be born into a position of power, you might have a trading um, certificate, um, or what are they called? The deeds. Um, or you might be like a rogue trader or something like that. People are always trying to kill you so that they can up their family um, within the Imperium. Uh, so hiring assassins or h hiring um, assassins to kind of stop other assassins like that one movie with uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Basically like that. Uh, stopping assassins from assassinating you by hiring another assassin to assassinate that assassin. I hope that makes sense. Uh, but that does happen, and you can uh, implement that within your um, your lore of, of your of, of anything really that you're creating. Uh, it would be really cool to have an uh, space marine assassin, a uh, space marine chapter that specializes in assassins. It would go a little something like um, it was regular um, full force space marine chapter, but it was reduced to like a company or not even a company, maybe like a couple. Um, space marines that were left behind um, but it just so happens that those uh, that were left behind came from maybe a scout unit or it came from like uh, the ninth company the, uh, usually it's the reserve company um, and then um, they didn't want to continue or they couldn't continue uh, their chapter because of their gene flaw or because they just didn't have access to that um, and and they have to go and, and just become mercenaries, basically, like space marine. Well, 
n not mercenaries for hire, but just like they're out there looking to assassinate um, different Xenos uh, races or just like chaos cultists as an act of vendetta for the death of their chapter. Actually, that would be a really cool chapter. I wonder if there's already a chapter like that. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you guys have any uh, suggestions or any other topics that you guys would like us to cover, please comment down below. Now, this information is coming from the Dark Heresy books. Um, check out Dark Heresy. It's a role-playing game. We can't ever play... Well, we have not played the Dark Heresy game just because we can't ever get enough people to actually like participate. And I don't want to do the whole uh, Skype thing or, or like Google Hangout type thing and, and, and record it that way. There's some really good channels that already do that. Vaults of Terra did that for a while. And, and, and you know it was good content it's just that i don't think it's for us i don't really think that it's um something that we want to do um but if, if you're interested in role playing if you want to learn more about it check out the dark heresy books um and yeah i hope you guys enjoy don't forget we have a patreon a simple dollar a month helps us create more videos for you guys if you can't support us on patreon simply by liking commenting and sharing it really helps out the channel especially when you share our videos uh, so please do that guys Thanks for everything, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out.